Hi there, this is Richie Faulkner from Judas Priest. I'm here on stage on the Firepower Tour. I'm going to take you through some of my, uh, some of my gear, show you the guitar, show you the effects, show you the amplifiers, and uh, maybe show you some secrets of how we get the, the, the sound that we use on stage. So first of all, we've got the, uh, the new Epiphone signature Richie Faulkner V, which it sounds incredibly silly, really, but in, incredibly honored to, to have it, and have the name on it, you know, part of the Epiphone family. Um, it's a guitar that was based off of a, a Gibson V that I've been slowly customizing uh, over the years since I've joined Priest. Uh, and I'll actually show you that guitar later on as well. But this one is, uh, is the, the culmination of all the, the mods and all the customization that I've put on it over the years. So there's a double scratch plate instead of a single scratch plate. It's got the one volume knob, no tone, just one volume and one pickup selector switch. You've got the EMG 5766 um, bound body neck headstock we've also got the the input jack on the top wing here which just to me just makes it more streamlined when you're you know connecting rather than having ooh, rather than having um a big piece of cable coming out back into the bottom wing here it just makes more sense more streamlined uh we've got a satin neck um we've got a compartment for the emg battery re replacement in the back there so it makes it nice and easy to get the battery out and the forward rows yeah that's basically it and then you've got the ebony fretboard block inlays you've got the falcon logo on the 12th fret falcon came from uh when i joined the band rob halford uh, gave me the name the falcon from my surname which is faulkner uh originally it was falconer back in the day and apparently we flew kept and trained uh falcons for dignitaries and uh, all that sort of business so uh he said i've got to be called the falcon and it's kind of stuck ever since it's on picks it's on tour jackets and it's on now it's on the, the signature guitar so these I use only ball uh, what do I use they are 11 to 50 in uh, half a step down just E flat tuning um, and the picks I'm using are in tune uh, two mil these are custom picks we print them up custom and these are the x-wing picks for the for the US run uh, I always try to do something a bit special for each leg so that the fans can collect, they can swap and trade and stuff like that. So these are the X-Wings. I think Europe is going to be the, uh, the TIE Fighter Advance, so check those out. But these are 2 mil. Um, pretty heavy strings. I've always been a, a user of heavy strings. Um, I usually use uh, 11 to 50 in standard tuning as well. But, um, you know, they work in drop half a step as well. You've got the Priest logo at the top here, obviously, and the Epiphone logo. Again, bound, head, neck, body. And the satin neck, I'll, I'll show you later on, the, the original guitar had the, uh, you know, ordinary paint on it and because of the thumb ring that I wear, I take off all the paint on the, the top side of the neck here. So we wanted to recreate the feel of that without necessarily looking like an old decrepit neck, you know, so the master builder uh, he suggested doing a satin neck, we went with it and it's perfect. It gives that feel of, a, of an unpainted, unvarnished neck while still looking cool, you know. So that, that's it, um, that's the, the signature Flying V. Uh, so this is the, uh, the rack of guitars that I use uh, when I go out on the road this, this run. So you've seen the, the signature V. This is the, uh, this is the original guitar that that one was based on. You can see straight away on the neck here where the, all the paint's gone. So again, we just wanted to recreate that feel without looking like that, you know. Um, again, these are all customizations throughout the years, the battery compartment was put on, got a four spring Floyd Rose trem there, again the 5766 EMGs, one volume, double scratch plate, uh, that was a good idea at the time, I was using it for a song called Halls of Valhalla and you know, so I put that on there. Um, and you can see this one's got a lot of, a lot of wear, I mean you, you can't really, obviously you can't feel it, but if you feel here it's taken a big chunk out of of the wood here and it's gradually getting worn down from all the chains and the studs and everything which is super cool um, again input on the top wing there and uh, ebony fretboard block inlays so that's the original guitar that the signature was based upon so I still use it still use it alongside the signatures and they're fantastic together so that was that one I've got another signature there which is the same as this one they're both exactly the same setup they come right out of the box we don't mod them in any way we maybe change the action uh, depending on how they come you know uh, and how, how strong I'm feeling on the night you know but um, they're exactly the same spec as I said right out of the box they're exactly how I want them you know uh, this one here was a off-the-shelf um, custom V uh, and I've again modded it it's 
Uh, it had three, it had a volume tone, and tone or volume, volume tone. Got rid of that, put the double scratch plate on it. But this one's a, obviously a hard tail, so this, there's no tremolo on this one. Uh, so it's a string through body. We put the battery compartment in the back again for, for ease of use. And as you can see, this one's starting to, to break away from the paint, you know. But uh, this one's got a slightly fatter neck as well. This is a bit more of a sort of 50 style neck. Uh, these ones, these are, I forgot to say, these are kind of modeled on a, a more 60s neck. So it's a bit more of a slim taper uh, neck. Not as thin as a traditional V, but somewhere between a traditional V and this, you know, so it's somewhere in between. It's nice and meaty without being a baseball bat, you know, so. So that's the, uh, again, 57, 66 EMGs. And uh, that's basically it. So that was off, that was off the shelf, that one, which I've modded. This one comes out for Painkiller and the Sinner, which was the original. These, this one here is, I used the, the main signature on quite a few. I mean, I'm using it for uh, the opening of the set, Firepower, Running Wild, Grinder. I think I use it on um, Evil Never Dies, Heads Are Gonna Roll, Breaking the Law, Hellbent for Leather. So it gets quite a bit of usage throughout the set. This one, as I said, is, is Painkiller and Sinner. Um, this one is basically a backup for this one. So I don't use this one so much. It's just if anything goes wrong on the, on the signature, then I've got a backup. This one here, I use for all the hardtail stuff, really. So it's um, Bloodstone, Lightning Strike off the new record, Saints in Hell, Turbo, Green Man Alishi. So again, this one gets quite a lot of use. And uh, also for things like uh, another thing coming and living after midnight. So wherever I don't need uh, a Floyd um, and I've got time to change it, I'll, I'll use a, a hardtail guitar. So then we've got the Gibson Explorer. This was also bought from a store, same store as this one. It's the Music Zoo in Roslyn, if everyone, anyone wants to check it out. They've always got great guitars. They always, I always walk in there with nothing, always come out with at least one thing. So they're doing something right. But this was, um, this was a Gibson Custom uh, Explorer. Um, it's basically an Explorer with, you know, bound, again, bound body, neck. They didn't buy in the headstock for some reason. I don't know why they didn't do that, but it's got the ebony. Actually, this is the rich light fretboard, block inlays. Um, and again, as soon as I get something, I'm gonna customize it. So the switch goes from here to here. Uh, I've got one volume, one tone, EMG 57, 66, as in all of these at the moment, except the Les Paul, which we're coming to. Um, and that's basically it. It's, it's already, this is its first outing and already it's getting a bit of battle wear on there as well. So this is a great sounding guitar, it looks great, it's it's classy but it's kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of metal too, you know. Not that metal can't be classy, I'm just saying. It's uh, a classic guitar. Nice and weighty too, this one. Now the last one, I've had also as long as, uh, as long as this one. I think I had this one since the first Priest tour that I did. This is an 81 uh, Les Paul Custom, three pickup. It's got, uh, this one's, this one varies to the others in that it has 81, 85 pickups. EMG, of course. Uh, don't know what this one is. This one is a, an EMG X, but I couldn't tell you the number of it. Do you know what it is, Aiden? Uh, G, uh, uh, um, I'll get back to you. <laughs> we don't know what it is, but uh, it, it sounds great, whatever it is. I use it in the middle position. I use the middle position mainly for all, all clean stuff I use is usually on the, on the middle position, whether it's on the V or the Explorer or the Les Paul. Um, what else is it? It's got the Randy Rhodes uh, gold uh, switch for the pickups there. And except for that, it's a stock 81 Les Paul Custom. It's, again, you've got the paint off of the neck here. It's got tons and tons of buckle rash on the back. It's a, it's a, it's a workhorse, you know, it's a one piece body. Um, it's not the sandwich body like they, they were in the 70s. You know, this is a one piece with a maple top again. And this one, is different, I think, to all the others in that the knobs go up to 11, which uh, is the most, that was one of the secrets of the tone. They've got to go up to 11. I shouldn't really be telling you that, but uh, if it goes up to 11, you can sound like this. So uh, it's a Gibson Les Paul Custom. It's a workhorse, it's heavy. This is the heaviest guitar in the arsenal, um, weight-wise, I mean. So uh, it's a good friend of mine and I use it every night. So that's it. So that's the, that's the arsenal of guitars. Uh, we'll move on to the amps and the pedals. Right, so this is the uh, the rig, basically. We've got two Engel Powerball 2s here. We've got a main and a spare. Um, they've ne I shouldn't say this, but they've never gone down. I mean, Zach Wilde came up here once and he said, uh, you've got a main and a spare, and I said yes. And he said, well, what happens, what happens if they both go down? And 
never really thought about that, but they've never, they've, uh, touch wood, they've never gone down, you know, not like that. Um, great quality amps, they sound great every night. I've been using them again for seven years now. I think we've revalved them or retubed them once, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and not because they went down, just to put new tubes in them. They're just reliable, they're, they're made well, and they sound fantastic. Um, all the distortion sounds and all the, all the clean sounds come out of the amp. Um, and any colors like, you know, delay or chorus or anything like that comes out of the pedals, which are, they all go through a loop switcher, uh, which goes out to the front of the stage the controller out there. But they're, they're, they're on all the time and they're just, they're patched into various channels, you turn them on and off. So here we've got a, uh, an Ogre delay pedal. I bought this in Japan in 2015, 2014, I think. And uh, whatever this pedal did, I was going to buy it. And you know, just because it was, it was a robot head that skull came off, you know, how could you not? Whatever it does, if it farts, I was going to get it. You know, but luckily it was a delay pedal. Uh, I've been using that ever since. The classic Phase 90 with the one knob on it speaks for itself. Um, what have we got here? We've got um, a delay here that we use just for Sinner. No, tell a lie, it's Saints in Hell. It's a very sort of, it's a long delay um, that I find unusable in other songs, but just for that song we switch it in and switch it out just for one section. Um, we've got a tuner, it's important to be in tune. Uh, and then we've got the micro chorus. This is probably uh, the most important thing that I use. It's, I use it on everything, it's on all the time. I kick it off maybe once for the Sinner solo, uh, but otherwise it's on 100% of the time. You know, it, it, it kind of gives, for me, I've always found a slight amount of chorus gives a, uh, an EQ that you can't get from a standard EQ. It just gives it a bit more, a bit more color, a bit more sort of interest, really. So I use the chorus and everything. We've got a, a noise gate here because it gets noisy, and here is the micropog, the electroharmonics micropog. I think it's the micropog. It is the micropog. It says micro there. Um, so basically, what that does, it splits my original signal to an octave up and or an octave down. I just use an octave down. Um, for again a part in the sinner um, and the, the fun thing about all this is some of this we kick in and kick out literally once in the set but it just makes a difference it kicks in that little bit of color or a little bit of vibe that just makes the song i mean these songs have been around since 1974 so uh they're going to have different sounds different uh different filters and stuff like that so recreating that for the fans that have been with the band for that amount of time is important you know even if it's in there for 20 seconds i think it's important so uh, that's basically the effects. I've got, I'll take you over here. And also you've got the, the rudimentary bowl of Judas Priest soup, which is very important. You've got to have that. So over here, we've got the foot controller that controls it all. We've got the, uh, this is, these are the main patches. You've got the clean channel, the rhythm channel, the lead channel, which is completely dry, and the lead channel with a bit of delay on it. Um, and you could, as I said, you can also, these are programmed in with the effects on them, but you can turn them off, turn them on if you want. You've got the Phase 90 on this one. The fish and chips, being an Englishman, you can't, you can't really have a menu of sounds without fish and chips on it. So the, um, the fish is actually a, a Leslie simulator, which I've forgotten to show you. But that, that's, uh, I'll show you that briefly um, after this. So that's a, that's a Leslie simulator. And the chips are, if you click that, our catering um, lady, she comes out with a bowl of chips. So expect a bowl of chips any second now, because I've just clicked it. So that's basically what it does. Uh, we've got the Joe Cantrell Wah Wah pedal on the left, and we've got the Rotor Vibe on there as well. I don't actually use the Rotor Vibe at the moment for this set of songs that we're doing, but we, we keep it on there because it's yeah. symmetrical and it you know it makes everything uh, symmetrical. Um, so that's basically it, and that, that's all controlling the pedals in the rack. Um, so it's pretty straightforward really, it, it's, it's amps with pedals, but just the switching system is a bit more elaborate. Um, and as I said, I don't know how any of that works, that's all AD Vines, he controls everything. I can just about turn the whole system on, but um, so yeah, that's basically what it is. Sorry lads. <laughs> so, the, the fish button. I don't want to hit the chips again because we'll get another bowl of chips. Anyone want a bowl of chips? I've already got one coming. She's going to kill me. So, the fish button is basically... It's got that Leslie simulator kind of swirly effect. 
And uh, again, that's just for the beginning of Sinner. So there's a bit of the, at the beginning, it's just one chord held out, and it's literally. Uh, that sort of sound with a bit of delay on it, which was what it was on the record. So as I said, it's kind of recreating um, as close as possible the the effects and the feelings of that those old records which I got and I know millions of fans around the world got so uh, and then I kick it out and don't use it again so uh, but it does a good job it does a great job it sounds great and it is the it's the the boss isn't it Eddie? Yep. it's in, in the back there the R, RT20 the boss RT20 so it's uh it's a nice kind of 80s Porsche brown which I like and uh, it's got a you know just swirly stuff in there which gives you the, the, the top horn and, and the bottom part of the rotary uh, speaker spinning around. We were going to get an original rotary speaker and put it in the back but they weigh a ton and uh, so we just got that and it does a great job so that's what the fish button does. That's all the secrets, that's all the, uh, the fun and all the you know the, the pedals, uh, amplifiers, guitars that I use on stage. Uh, we are in the US at the moment on the Firepower Tour so come out and check us out if you haven't checked it out already. We will, we're looking at coming back some stage in the new year and we're trying to get around to everyone in the world so uh, we'll see you out there soon and if up until then check out the website judaspriest.com or all our socials instagram facebook twitter for any news on priest and the tour and the record so see you out there